Okay, folks, now what we need to do is just to round this uh, beginning session on drawing in Flash with uh, layers on the timeline. So let's see how they'll work into how we'll build things. So we'll go in and create a new document. And let's give it a name. Any name you like. So we've been looking down here at the timeline area and we've noticed that there's always been this layer called layer one and this keyframe on it that we've been putting things into not really understanding too much or having much experience with it but we can add or delete layers each of these layers has some properties and settings and the idea behind them is to be able to give us the same concept of the Z order but also gives us the ability to uh, control objects and work with them as uh, independently so we're going to choose properties by right mouse clicking over it and you can see the properties that are involved and there's your place where you'd give the layer a name along with other attributes that we can set and change. I'll just cancel that and you can also click sequentially into the name of the layer and change it right there. I'll just call this one background. And then well, let's put a background on our layer. We'll just use a rectangle. And in the fill area, I'll choose uh, a gradient. And in the stroke, I'll choose no color. And I'll draw a rectangle close to the stage size and use the properties window if I need to to adjust it to 0, 0 and the exact size. So I managed to hit the X and Y perfectly, but the width I'm off by 1, so I'll fix that and also the height. <clears throat> Alright, I got it in uh, perfectly, and what I'm going to do is uh, change the orientation, but I'll, to do that I'll go over to the Transform Group Tools and choose the Gradient Transform Tool and rotate this and also change the distance so that it's just covering the object that we're building on. And I'll bring up the Color Panel. Make sure I have this selected. And what I'll do is, is I'll move the white color to the center. Add another color chip where I've removed it. And now just a matter of playing with some colors. i use a darker blue on this side. Sort of an oceany look. And on the uh, right hand side I'll use a lighter blue. Somewhat of a sky look. And we don't have to be perfect here, but we've got kind of a, an ocean sky horizon arrangement here. All right, so that is my background and a layer for it. So if I want to put more items onto this stage, it would occupy this layer of the problem with the Z order and merging shapes. So what I'll do next is add a layer, and that's down at the bottom right corner of this layer group. And you see it's added above the layer that's selected and on that layer we can draw items so one of the items we're going to draw is a ball that we've lost on the ocean so we'll come over here to our tool group and we'll choose the oval tool and for fill I'm going to choose uh, the red a radial gradient that's already there and no stroke and then on the stage on this new layer and I want to make sure I have it selected. If I don't have it selected it will, it will go on the other layer and we can prevent actually using the other layer by locking it. We'll look at that in a moment but you can just click on it you know you have it and then on the stage just draw yourself a ball that you've lost in the ocean. Alright so we have this ball that's on the stage. It's on its own layer so let's change the layer's name to lost ball and you can put spaces in these layer names. They're only for your eyes. They're not used anywhere else in any electronic way other than you to look at them on the stage. <clears throat> okay, so now I have this ball and what I'd like to do is to is just to show you. I'm going to move it a little bit off the edge of the stage so you can sort of see it um, outside of the rectangle and then we can just drag these layers to rearrange their Z order or which is on top. So the one layer that's on the bottom of the timeline is always the one that's furthest back and uh, the one on the top is always the closest. All right, and so we can select everything on a layer by just clicking the layer 
or clicking one of the keyframes in that layer and it would select every object that's on it, another way of selection. And we can lock a layer to prevent changing it. So right now if I just hit by accident uh, with the selection tool I've moved that, I'll undo that with the keyboard. So if I lock this layer and there's a lock a button or a column and you can click on that and it's locked and now we can't do anything to that but we can still move this ball around all right and then we can lock all the layers and unlock them with the lock button that's at the top of the column and this way it gives us the ability to control or to select things and not accidentally click something that's already been completed all right so now I have the um, ball in here and I really want the ball sort of floating in the water so what I need to do is to actually split the shape that I created for the background so I'm going to lock the ball layer and go to the background unlock that and one of the problems you will have if you lock layers you'll forget and then you'll be wondering why you can't do anything so that'll be after a few times you'll start to say oh that's the problem and what I want to do, this actually I drew as a drawing object. So I'm going to convert it from a drawing object back to a shape or a native shape. And how you do that is you use the, I'm going to use the shortcut menu, right mouse click, and use break apart. Break apart has many functions, but for a drawing object it will return it to native drawing shapes. And now we do, we just have the fill here, and it does say shape. All right, so what we can do with this is deselect it and then with the selection tool in hand I'm going to try to select uh, some of the so the this part of it will be above the ball and I'm going to cut it now I'm remembering that I have that selected in my clip area I'm going to add a layer background layer selected and I add a layer and I call this layer uh, water um, and now I have this layer now these keyframes will indicate whether there's objects on them with a black dot or an open dot or a circle and that's indicate there's nothing on it but that's where we want to paste this so I've selected this layer it doesn't really matter there's only one frame it will go right there and then I'll paste and then with the uh, arrow key I'm used to using to nudge it down, maybe the shift and the arrow key to move a little quicker, and then the arrow key. All right. So there's my water in its own layer, and the other layer called background, maybe I'll call that sky. But the actual names will really be up to you, and depending on the objects you're creating and how you do them. And let me select the water again. It looks like it needs to be moved up just a nudge. All right, so now the water's, um, the, the lost balls on the top and then there's the water and then there's the sky so what I want to do is get the lost ball between the water and the sky and I now have it in between the water and the sky so the order in which you have these listed shown here will determine that and let me lock the water and let me lock the sky unlock the lost ball and let it float a little bit higher and there it is floating out on the ocean so that's the first example of you using layers to organize various objects and also you can see the idea how to get something maybe it looks like it's in the middle of a picture appearing out and so you got a good start with layers with this example we'll try to do another one